I try to ride my e-bike for an hour, five or six times a week. Sometimes wildfire smoke makes it mildly uncomfortable. But for people who live closer to areas affected by wildfires or who are unfortunate enough to be downwind of a wildfire, report they report more severe effects from breathing in that smoke. How harmful is it? What can we do to avoid the smoke? To answer these questions and more, I spoke with Ira Jacobs, Professor of Exercise and Physiology at the University of Toronto and Director of the Tannenbaum Institute for Science in Sport. Uh, welcome to the interview, Ira. It's nice to be here with you. This is very interesting because we've had, particularly in the last two, three years, a lot of wildfire smoke. It's been bad out in Western Canada. I don't know what it's like out in Ontario where you are, uh, but people are really worried about this. Well, we're just, uh, today is actually the first day where there's kind of a, a haze here in Toronto uh, that's noticeable. So it certainly made its way here. Uh, last summer, we had our fair share of that as well. Of course, it's not nearly as bad as it is in is in uh, Manitoba and Saskatchewan and then moving your way uh, as well. Um, but it's a concern and uh, so much of a concern to me. I'm a, a human physiologist and uh, spent most of my career actually doing work for the military and about the body temperature regulation um, in the heat. And it's a double whammy in the summer where you have this, this uh, smoke uh, and particularly forest fire smoke, uh, which is different than other kinds of smoke in terms of the potential for, for harm to our, uh, to our lungs, uh, combined with the, the beginning of a hot summer, which is really the most dangerous time for people uh, because they're not used to being active in the heat. So both of those things together cause a, a more serious problem than either one of them would do alone. Ira, tell us how wildfire smoke is different from other smoke and why it might be more or less harmful. Well, it's the molecule itself. It's a, it's a combustible, it's the result of combustion. And um, the, the particle size of them by itself is similar to lots of uh, particulate matter in the air that uh, is that constitutes air pollution. Um, the bigger the molecule, the harder it is for that molecule when we breathe it in to make its way down into the deep tissues of the lung uh, where it can do most harm. Unfortunately, the particulate matter, which is the result of forest fire smoke, is uh, the smallest kind. It's, it's less than uh, 2.5 microns or micrometers. And that's, that, that's, that's the very, very small size. Just to give you a reference point, uh, the diameter of a uh, of a hair follicle would be about 10 micrometers the the uh the covid virus molecule would be uh four maybe five maybe a bit smaller but most of it not smaller than 2.5 micrometers which is constitutes the very fine particulate matter and that means that as we uh inspire air it will make its way deeper down into the tissues into the the lungs into the alveoli um, and possibly even into the bloodstream from there, where it can do, do its harm. Um, it causes more inflammation, more respiratory problems than does particulate matter from other kinds of smoke. Well, Ira, we prepared a top 10 list of things that folks can do, especially if they're being active outdoors and wildfire smoke is in the air. Uh, uh, you've had some input into it. So let's start with number one, which is check the air quality before going outside. Definitely. Those ind indexes are, our indices are relatively new. They've only been around for a few years now that in terms of the, the, the popular, popularly used um, weather apps, um, but definitely worthwhile checking them. There's an agreed to risk factor um, that is used by those air quality apps or the information that you'll find on the Weather Channel or other places. Um, and um, it divides it, the risk into um, seven, eight, nine, perhaps even 10 categories now. Uh, and it will tell you, it will define for you what behavioral modifications you should consider doing um, for a given air quality. Right now, uh, today in Toronto, and, and again, I can't speak for other places in the country, uh, right here in the country, it's, uh, it's classified as a medium risk here in Toronto. And, uh, and then on top of that, we have a heat problem, which we can go into separately. Number two, exercise early or late in the day. Yeah. Definitely good advice um, for the, first of all, for the reason that it's cooler in the summer at those temperatures. Um, and and that, that, that does affect how much you inspire air. So the cooler the temperature, the, the less you 
um, will have to work compared to in a hot environment, the less strain, physiological strain. And that means you won't be breathing as much, which means you won't be ingesting, uh, uh, inspiring as much particulate matter. So both of those times are good. Air pollution is lower. In the day, obviously, less traffic, lower first thing in the morning and, and later at night. Number three is near and dear to my heart because COVID changed my behavior in, in that I now mm -hmm. wear, whenever I'm out in public, I wear a mask. I, I lost a spleen in a car crash 30 years ago. And so I pick up every little bug that go, comes around. And I've only been sick once in five and a half years, which I attribute mostly to the, to the mask. And, but that's also good advice for, uh, you know, if you're being active uh, outside and there's uh, smoke in the air. Yeah, even if you're not being active outside, um, if there's smoke in the air, it's good advice, um, in, in my opinion. And the the uh, N95 masks, which are specifically designed to capture that small particulate matter that I mentioned, um, would be the category of mask that you want to use, sometimes called KN95, um, or a full risk. I've seen people cycling, particularly in Toronto, um, wearing full respirators, full face masks with filters in them. Um, and uh, that that's, presents a bit of a an obstacle to breathing if you're going to be uh, huffing and puffing while you're exercising. Uh, so I'm not so sure I go that far, but uh, definitely on a smoky day, uh, worthwhile. Uh, one note of caution, though, apparently cloth and surgical masks don't offer a lot of protection. Not against the fine particulate matter, the small ultra ultra particles. I'm talking. We've been talking about today. Uh, that's correct. They they make their way through cloth. Number four, uh, limit high intensity activity. Yes, and for a reason that I'm sure will make sense to everybody. Obviously, the higher the intensity of activity, the more volume of air you're going to be putting into and out of your lungs, and the greater the likelihood that you're going to be trapping more of that fine particulate matter from the forest fire smoke in your lungs where you don't want it. So I guess uh, if there is a wildfire smoke in the air, do low impact activity like walking or yoga instead of running or cycling? Um, frankly, I don't think the impact is the issue. I mean, you can uh, you can have a pretty intense workout by walking up a hill and you find yourself uh, huffing and puffing an awful lot, just like you may do during running. So it really is the intensity, not so much the, the mode. If you're, if you're exercising outside, um, it's the intensity. And what you have to remember is that both the smoke as well as combined with heat will cause the same exercise that you normally do, let's say the same speed of cycling or the same speed of walking or running, it'll feel harder because it is harder physiologically. And that means that you're going to be um, inspiring more air than you normally would in that kind of, in those environments. So you have to titrate your, adjust your intensity down so that it feels like it normally does. Not at that, don't keep it up at that higher intensity that it's going to feel like when there is lots of particulate matter in the air um, or it's warm outside. And be sure to adjust for that. Uh, number five is hydrate constantly. And I didn't realize that wildfire smoke dries out the air that much. Well, I think a lot of smoke will, um, and uh, the, uh, the 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 airways in particular. So you could uh, feel coarse, a coarse throat, have a have a have a hoarse uh, sounding voice. Um, definitely, you can uh, have irritation in the throat and in the airways generally. And keeping them uh, moist will will assist with alleviating those 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 symptoms. So yeah, hydration is important, definitely, regardless. Um, but don't overdo it. There is a propensity uh, for people to fall for the advertisements that, uh, that indicate you should be drinking and drinking and drinking all the time. And there's a very easy test to do uh, when you're out, um, particularly if you're active. Uh, if you have the ability to weigh yourself before your activity and then again after your activity, just be sure that you replace that weight loss. It won't be, the weight loss won't be, I assure you, unless you've been exercising for 10 hours, it won't be because you lost a lot of weight because of calories you're burning. What you've lost is primarily fluid um, and that you should restore. So bring your weight back with liquid, not with food. Um, that's the advice. And you're uh, furthermore uh, sip on a regular basis every 15 minutes or so, as opposed to, you know, drinking uh, a lot from your, from your cup. Yeah. Better to be uh, ahead of the situation and not have to make up in a big, uh, 
having to drink a liter of uh, of Gatorade at the end of your workout. Better to better to sit throughout. Very much so. And I guess uh, number six is is an obvious alternative, which is uh, choose indoor activities. For sure, um, particularly on on hot days and smoky days. Uh, definitely, if you have the ability to do that, um, be be sure that you are. If you are indoors. Be sure you are exercising indoors um, because the temperature is cooler and because there isn't the filtration of, uh, of uh, forest fire smoke into the area where you're working out. Otherwise, it defeats the purpose. Number seven is protect your eyes and skin. And some of the advice here makes a lot of sense to me, which is wrap around sunglasses or even clear glasses. When I'm out on my bike, for example, um, you know, I wear them to keep the bugs out of my eyes. And I never thought that it would be, you know, provide, provide protection from wildfire smoke. Well, I'm no expert in that area, but it certainly makes very much uh, a lot of good common sense to me. Shower and change clothes after exposure. This is uh, one I hadn't expected. I think uh, that that also is uh, uh, almost a common sense type uh, recommendation. The um, forest fire combustion will result in this particular matter that will infiltrate your clothes, be all over it. Um, you, 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 of course, you'll be able to smell it. Um, but it's good to get that um, off as soon as you can and, uh, and launder your clothes. Number nine, listen to your body, uh, you know, for symptoms like uh, coughing or shortness of breath. Excellent suggestion. And, uh, uh, you know, we, we, we talk about how people perceive how they're exercising. If I ask you to rate how hard your, 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 your walk is on your morning walk um, on a scale of zero to 10, and that relate that relate that to the actual physiological strain that's occurring in your body in a variety of different physiological systems. People are pretty good. You don't have to be a specialist. People are pretty good at making a very accurate rating relative to what they're maximally capable of. And uh, so, yes, listen to your body. Don't overdo it. So when you're trying to think on a, on a scale of zero to ten, uh, if you're normally walking and working out at a, at a at a five, well. Like I said before, maintain that five. Even that—that that means don't necessarily maintain the pace. Don't necessarily um, maintain the rate of cycling or the speed of bicycling. Maintain the sensation that you feel, exactly as you described it. Uh, listen to what your body says. Uh, here's one that I find very interesting because out of the COVID pandemic, there are a lot of uh, experts like um, uh, engineers and and. Uh, occupational, uh, what do they call them? Uh, the folks who worry about occupational uh, air um, are advocating for clean air policies. And so the, the 10th one is get a clean air zone for your home, create one with a HEPA filter. Yeah, um, I, th I think clean air policies at, at the workplace um, are beginning to be instituted and uh, demanded um, by, 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 by statute in many jurisdictions now around the country, which is good. Um, and uh, I know in uh, doing so in your own home is a also good advice. If, if it gets so bad that um, uh, you, you are smelling a lot of smoke in your house, then it's time, uh, or other pollutants, then, then it's time to think about taking action. Um, I'll tell you what I did last year. I, I, uh, um, we, we, the smoke was bad enough here in Ontario. And again, that's not nearly as bad as it was in other places in the country. Um, but last summer, I, I uh, invested, for me, it was an investment in purchasing a central HEPA filter um, that attaches to my uh, forest air uh, blower in the house. And and uh, the air is filtered before it goes into the ducts that uh, circulate throughout the house. And we noticed a huge difference, not just in regards to the, the smell of smoke, which it did, um, but actually uh, also in reducing um, pollen and other things that one of my kids has allergies to. So just a, an extra byproduct. Uh, so it's it's worthwhile. Other things you can do is think of of uh, sealing your windows better than they are now. You could buy um, plastic screen sealing for windows that are very effective. Uh, Ira, that that's our uh, top ten list. Any other final thoughts before I let you go? Um, I just uh, hope that everybody remembers that it's just the beginning of the summer, and that is when we are at the highest risk physiologically. We have not yet adapted. Humans are great. I mean, we know people can live in really hot environments all year round, but we don't. And uh, it takes time to adjust. It takes a couple of weeks to adjust to hot temperatures. And uh, so your point about listening to your body is critical 
in this first week or two of hot weather. Great advice. Thank you very much for this. Really appreciate your insights. You're welcome.